Good morning, everybody. I'm excited for today's show. We are going to talk with Lindy Chapman, but I'm going to fire off the countdown timer now so that I can share out this event, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. I forgot to set up the countdown. realize my camera and monitor are a little crooked here anyhow we are back thank you so much for joining us this morning live with lindy chapman who is a relocation real estate and live video expert there you go lindy i'm throwing out a lot of egg you're an expert on a lot of things here on the show today but if you just happen to be joining the show and you've never watched one before couple of housekeeping tips for you one, I call this the example show because it's an example of how you do a live show. And another thing is, if you'll see across the very bottom of the screen, I put scrolling across the bottom questions for the audience to answer. And it's one of my favorite parts of live shows when you get the audience involved and get them to answer some questions and interact a little bit. So right now, the question is, where are you watching from? I will tell you where I'm watching from. I am from Sioux Falls, South Dakota and I'm in my basement right now, so that's where I am. But that's how the show works. Right above where the scrolling question is, I usually put a topic of what the speaker, our guest today, I gotta get my arrows right this way, what our guest <laughs> Lindy, Lindy will be talking about and what types of questions she'll be answering. So that's how the show goes. Right now, I'm gonna toss it over to Lindy to give us an introduction to herself. And Lindy, I always tell people, this is where you can brag as much as you want. So don't hold back, go ahead. Hey, thanks so much for having me and um, welcome everybody. Um, I am a 10 time plus corporate relocation client and I was not the employee that moved. I was the spouse, the partner of the employee that kept getting moved. And so, um, and that's how I got into the business of relocation and real estate. Um, it's because, hey, Bobby Bryant, good to see you. Um, because I understand firsthand the challenges of relocation. So when we moved to Dallas from um, Europe, I became a real estate agent. Um, learned a lot about the industry, learned a lot what made me frustrated as a consumer. And hey, Ved from India, well, he's from Boston, but in India right now, good to see you too. <laughs> um, and uh, but anyway, got involved in the business, realized what was wrong, what was frustrating to me as both the client and what's frustrating to real estate agents. Um, and then recently left my six figure career there in um, that I built, which was really an interesting thing because I've been a stay at home mom. So I guess that's my brag that I've been a stay at home mom. I hadn't been in the corporate world for 20 years. You and I were just talking about homeschooling. I homeschooled our four kids for a long time. When we moved to Germany, they went to school, but I did manage to rebuild a career within a few years after moving back to the States um, and then moved to Boston this year, right prior to a pandemic, trying to figure out how I was going to pivot my career in real estate. I really did not want to continue to be a realtor. I really wanted to change the way the industry operated, change the way consumers interact with real estate agents. And, um, and then most recently, um, Bobby Doss reached out to me and asked me if I would come on board with his um, tech startup called Doss or Ask Doss which is a tech brokerage and I am CEO of social agents. So I am um, starting up something and doing something. Uh, we're both doing something a little different than has been in the industry. Well, I, all of that is, is interesting and you do a number of different things. I don't even know if you mentioned that you do a live show in there, but you do a live, well, I believe it's a huge part of it. The, the live show is why I'm here today. So, so I'm excited yeah. to talk about how to use live. I love what you're doing. 
Yeah. Well, uh, quick shout out here, Wendy. Welcome to the conversation, Wendy. I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited for the conversation as well. I believe Wendy is a new connection of mine. Do you know Wendy? I do. She is the founder of a company called Selling Later. I met her at the Inman conference. Actually, I didn't meet her, but it was through the Inman conference we both attended in New York City, where she spoke on the stage about a platform she's created for home sellers to let buyers know when their home is going to be coming to the market, which I think is brilliant. Okay, now is the intro part of the show where I ask you some simple get to know you questions. These are kind of fun, pretty light. Don't think too hard on some of these, but uh, I like to ask them. And I'm switching up the audience question here. For the audience, are you a paperback, audiobook, or an ebook type of person? For Lindy, we will get to that question, but my first question for you is how many cups of coffee do you drink per week? As many as there are days in the week, seven. Just you just do one a day? Yeah, just one a day. Hey, that's that's pretty good. That's I I like this question. I get so many different answers. My favorite answer I think ever was some somebody asked me, can we measure it in pots? And <laughs> <laughs> so so one a day is good. I'm I'm not a coffee drinker, but I like the question anyways, because I've realized people are passionate about their coffee. And they have an opinion there. All right. When you read, are you a paperback, ebook, audiobook, or do you just not read? I'm just going to go ahead and skew this. I'm a hardback reader. I love hardback books. But You're yes, the I second like person in the last three <laughs> weeks that said hardback book. And I need to add that to the list, I guess. Maybe I just need to call it a <laughs> physical book. Yes, physical I like book. the physical. I like yeah all right well that's that's good i i think i prefer the physical books too but i, I don't know different people different different things so uh another another great question what is your favorite restaurant and i'm going to add this in there you can say mcdonald's mm, no it's going to be thai food um oh. we have a couple here that I like but uh, called pho basil but yeah it's 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 anything thai Hey, that's that's okay. Do you do you have a favorite <laughs> Thai restaurant? Um, yeah, there's one here called Pho Basil and another one called The King and I um, that I like. But um, yeah, other than that, um, yeah, anything with like vegetarian options, anything with like salads and and things like that, I really like. Hey, yeah. no specific, no specific brand or restaurant. All right, I, is is there any reason behind the Thai or just? Just because you like Thai food, or did you did you ever go to Thailand? I have. I yeah, I spoke at a conference there uh, last year. Yeah, but um, no, I just have always liked Thai food. So all right, that's good enough for me. I don't know that I've ever eaten at a Thai food restaurant, so well, I probably need to put that on my list. You should. I'll give you a list of things to try <laughs> if they have that in South. Dakota. <laughs> you know, South Dakota doesn't have everything. But I, I'm guessing, so I live in Sioux Falls, which is the most populated city in South Dakota. I think we're right about 200,000 people. So we're not a huge city, but I, I don't live on a farm either. We have a lot of, th there's probably a Thai restaurant in town. I've just never looked. So, okay. Okay. We're going to keep moving through these. I am going to switch up the audience question out there. Actually, before I do that, I, I got a few I got a few answers here uh, from Ilya. I think that's how you say her name, Ilya. Uh, she's excited for this today. She is a part of Team Coffee here. So Ilya, I'm going to shout this out and answer. You can throw in the comments, how many cups of coffee do you drink every week? That might be interesting to know. And Gopalan is here. Good morning, Gopalan. He's a frequent watcher of the show, someone I met on LinkedIn. He's a surgeon. I believe he's still in, in India, but he has traveled the world doing surgery and being a part of different universities and medical staff. So welcome to the show, everyone. Talking with Lindy Chapman about relocation and using a live show to grow your business and your brand. And my next audience question is, 
rate your latest real estate experience. When you moved, did you use a realtor and was it good or was it bad? I would say, I'll briefly talk about my last one. Uh, I think I've lived in my house for 10 years, but I would say my, my experience was largely neutral. Here's what I thought. I thought I wasn't sure how much the realtor actually did. Like they fill out lots of paperwork. And so that's one of the questions I'm going to ask you later, Lindy, is sort of what, what else do realtors do that I don't know about? Because it's, you know, if I were to ask my kids what I do, they just say, oh, dad stands in front of a computer all day long. Like you don't always know what's going on behind there. But I don't know what that is. But my last get to know your question for Lindy before we get into live shows and real estate is what career did you want growing up? Ooh, you know what? I wanted to be a doctor. Um, so my dad was a doctor and he actually kind of talked me out of it, but that's what I wanted to do. So. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Your dad talked you out of it. Why? Yeah. I, um, just because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a demanding job and, and he did work all the time, but anytime I could go to the hospital with him and, and do rounds with him, or when he would go read EKGs, I would go with him and sit in his office. I, I just found it fascinating in high school for four years. I was, um, in the um, teen volunteer program that they had at the hospital, I spent hours. I can't remember. I wish I could remember. I, maybe I could go back and find out how many hours I logged in um, just volunteering at the hospital and being a, you know, taking water to patients' rooms and stuff. But um, yeah, so um, so that's what I thought I wanted to do. But I'm glad I didn't now because I wouldn't have been able to live this kind of mobily global life that I've lived. Um, that would have been very hard given the man that I married. Um, and I would say that, you know, we end up where we're supposed to end up, but yeah, that was what I wanted to do. Well, that's true, but I think you could still be, I think, still think you can move around if you're a doctor. Cause I think every city in the world. And, um, it's just, you know, most doctors, professionals like that would stay in one place and build a practice. Right. And then, um, so it's all good. Everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. That's good. I don't think I ever really thought about being a doctor. I'm not a huge fan of of blood. I actually really liked the math and science part of it. And, you know, I think I could have gotten through some of that part of medical school. But as soon as it involves, you know, blood and cutting into flesh for surgery, I'm out. I'm out. Count not me out on that. I can't yeah. do that. Uh, so let's let's dive into... Our very first question, we're going to start out with some questions about live shows because that's one of the reasons I really wanted you on the show today because live shows, I think they're a great way to share your message and interact with the audience. And one of the things I really like, visit with interesting people so I get to talk with people like you every week or so. And it's just interesting to meet these new people. So we're going to dive into some questions about what's it like to have a live show and one of the first things I wanted to ask you is what has your live show allowed you to do with your career? Um, that's a great question. You know, it, it allowed me to bypass the um, red tape and the corporate side of, um, of getting to where I wanted to go. I became a real estate agent thinking I would go straight into working with relocation clients. That's what I wanted to do. We had always been moved by a relocation management company. I picked an agency that had a huge relocation program and I'm ready to go, right? Because I understand what I needed from a real estate agent that most times when I moved to a new city, I didn't get, or when I sold my home, I didn't get, I didn't receive and um, got into the industry. And I realized how the industry works. Um, and that's part of that confusion you were talking about earlier. It's, it's um, it, I didn't understand. I had no idea how the industry worked, how commissions worked, how the, that the agents that I usually worked with were only getting about 50% of the commission that was paid by the seller. And that they were never gonna let a real estate, a new real estate agent do relocation 
um, because the broker was already taking 50% or 40% of everything that I brought into the company, every home that I sold, they would take 40% of. And, um, and so they aren't going to let me do corporate relocation because they were already getting that from me. Um, the other thing I really wanted to do is I wanted to get into training agents. And so I talked a lot about that and, and wanting to help train agents to understand the empathy that they needed, even if a company is taking 50% of their commission and they're not making as much working with the relocation client, the importance of their job. The importance of making sure not just the transactions taken care of, but that new employee coming into a new city was really taken care of. Or if they were selling their home and they had little kids and that's and, and, and the, you just need empathy with that situation. Yes. And uh, I was told, though, that because I was a new agent, I couldn't do that, that I had no business doing it, that everybody loved real estate agents, that I was the only one that had ever had. A frustration with my real estate agent. Um, you know, I would love for anybody that's watching, if you've ever been frustrated with the real estate industry and wishing it would work more like you work as a consumer, I'd love for you to give a big like button on that because I think that's one of the biggest challenges in the industry. If you have an industry that operates one way and you have a consumer that really needs and wants something else, especially given today's technology. Um, so anyway, so after I was told I couldn't do that and I couldn't do some of the things that I wanted to do um, to tailor my commissions, um, I left. And that's when I started doing video and using video specifically on LinkedIn and, um, and be able to talk about what I know and really to talk about what others don't know, what people in the industry don't know that would be helpful for them to know in order to bridge that gap. All right. How long have you been doing a live show? Um, LinkedIn asked me to do, to beta test, I guess it was last January. So for a year and a half. So I was one of the first um, LinkedIn live beta testers. Um, I had never done a Facebook live, um, still have never done a Facebook live. So, um, you know, <laughs> I know. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll try anything. But, um, and then I used it um, at that point, I was a real estate agent. So I used it to talk about relocation to Dallas and I would go to events. I would be asked to speak at events because they loved having my LinkedIn live and to broadcast the event. And I would always weave relocation into it, all the great reasons to, to move to Dallas and, and what the challenges are with moving to Dallas and how to find the right real estate agent when you move to Dallas. Yeah, that's gotta be a, uh, an interesting thing when you move to a new city, picking a real estate agent and finding one that actually yeah. works for what you need because every family wants something different when they move somewhere. And I, yep. obviously the real estate agent gets a commission off the sa sale, but you, you want to yep. find one that actually wants your best interest in mind, not just selling a house or making Absolutely. a move. Absolutely. And I think that's the biggest problem is that, um, and, and it's not that I always say this, it's not that you've, you know, you've had a bad agent. You may simply not have known the questions to ask to find the right agent. Um, and I think that's really, and that's why I'm excited about DOS. And that's the difference that DOS makes is that social agents that I'm coming in to head up is really a way to, and I used a hashtag before joining DOS called not your realtor, because that was what was so important. When people would call me to list their home, their farm and ranch, or to sell them a condo, I would just, because I'm, I'm coming at it from a perspective of, of a client and how would I want my real estate agent to respond to me? What kind of real estate agent now that I look back at it, if I had known the questions to ask, would I've asked? And so I would always say, you know what? I'm not your realtor for listing your farm and ranch or I'm not the right agent for selling your condo. That's not my specialty. But let me find somebody who is. And that's what social agents are is it's they're not acting realtors they are licensed they are active licensed real estate agents um, but they are connections to the community they will help you decide moving to a city the size of dallas fort worth explore the different options give you information on schools they can tell you about the different cities and um, and find out from you the questions to ask to help connect you to the right real estate professional and that can make all the difference in the success of, of that transition and that transaction. Because not right. every real estate agent, it's, you know, it's like going to a foot specialist when you need a hand specialist, you know, you, but you, you know the questions to ask to find the right doctor. You're not gonna go to a heart surgeon if you just need a, a, a pediatrician, right? You're going to, right. you've got to know what your needs are, what your personality is, what your unique property needs are, your location, what kind of time do you need? And then ask those questions. But people don't, like you said, you haven't bought or sold a home in 10 years. The industry's changed. There's 100,000 brokers.
realtors. There's 1.4 million realtors in the world. In Dallas, there's like 30,000 real estate agents. Um, and if you've not yes. bought or sold a home in the last five years, you have no idea how the industry's changed, what questions to ask. Do you need to list with a flat fee service? Do you need to list with a full fee brokerage? Neither one's right or wrong. There's only, yeah. you know, what you what you know is right. Yeah, just don't know the difference there. All right, we got to jump into some <laughs> uh, audience questions here. So I believe Wendy is responding to our rate your most recent real estate experience, and she hit the confusing. So whether it was good or bad, if she thought it was confusing. I I would kind of assume that's bad, but so here you go. And Lindy, you had just mentioned this that. I, it can be confusing dealing with real estate. Uh, another Ranga, Ranga, uh, he just joined in and said he's he's happy to be here. But thanks for joining, Ranga. If you happen to also just be joining us, uh, we are talking with. Yeah, I'm getting getting rid of some banners here. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're talking with Lindy Chapman about creating a live show, how you can use that live show to grow your business and to spread your message as well as the real estate ind industry, because that's where Lindy works. And she's created a live show talking about real estate and how that works. Uh, I, I did want to have one follow-up question for you here. I'm switching our faces around to make you bigger in the center of attention here. Uh, you mentioned you started your show when you were a realtor in Dallas working for another company. How did your show change after you left that company and decided to uh, do, I guess, do your own thing and run your own real estate agency there? Did you actually, is it actually a real estate agency that you ran yourself or? Well, I didn't. No, I didn't run it. I just was a, I was just a real, I was just a realtor. I didn't, I wasn't a broker. I was just under another brokerage. That brokerage though really allowed me to design my own business the way I wanted to. And that was when I started the live shows. That was when I was asked to be a LinkedIn live beta tester was right after I joined that. Um, and you know, my business just changed in that I, I focused on relocation, right? One of my first clients was actually a company that was moving employees to, um, to Dallas. And they had about three or four guys that were moving in with their families. And so I took care of them and made sure that they got not only, you know, the right help that they needed for finding a home, but connected with the spouses. Um, we talked about schools. We talked about some of them were homeschooling and um, was just there to be a resource. One of them really did a lot of the own, their work on their own. They ended up finding the home that they wanted. It was a build right. that they were, it was being built. Um, it was with the builder. I still was their real estate agent, but built working with the builders, a lot less work for me. And he was, he's a, he's a construction guy. He's a roofer. He he's in there digging in. He's asking the hard questions. He's a businessman, right? He wants to be really involved in that process. I really right. was more of a facilitator. I might have kind of holding people accountable. There were a few mistakes I caught, but it was a, it was a very different um, transaction time-wise and expertise-wise for me than versus when I'm working with a client that's relocating, they don't know where they want to live and I'm driving all over Fort, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth. And, and so different, different needs, different expectations, different expertise, different time requirements. And so because of that, I rebated them some money back at closing that they were able to use to get their media center, center set up. And it was just it, it's the law of value and the go giver is, 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 um, is one of the, the tenants for, um, for Dass House, but give more in value than you take in payment. My, by my payment definitely fit the work that I did. It was, it was more than adequate. Um, but part of my value was making sure that they received value from that compensation as well, which was the media room because they had done a lot of the work themselves um, versus other sellers that I would work with or buyers that I would work with where I earned every penny of the compensation and they received every dime worth of value that they needed to receive from that. So I was able to tailor my approach and um, and really give the consumer what they wanted, what they needed, and put the consumer first rather than serving a brokerage, which is one of the challenges in our industry. But live was a huge part of that. Um, live was how I talked about relocation. That's how people called me out of the blue that I didn't know, but they had seen either articles I had written or articles where I had been quoted or they caught a live or I was talking about relocation to Dallas and they would call me and, um, and I would end up being their real estate agent. Yeah. Did that answer your question? 
I think so. I mean, one of one of the things I'm hearing from lots of people when I talk about lives is uh, when you do live shows, and I think this even goes for when you create content of any type. If you create the content correctly, your clients end up finding you and coming to you. So you just mentioned right. that you you got quoted. People saw things on LinkedIn. They found you and you talked about this stuff and you were giving value and sharing details in your live show. And when they needed a realtor, your name came to the top of the list as somebody they already know, they've seen and trusted. And I think live shows really does a good job with this whole trust thing. I think being able to see your face and actually know who we are, like the people who watch this show feel like they know yeah. us a little bit after watching this show. Right. And, and I think it's, it's, uh, it's the law of authenticity too, which again, I go back to the go-givers because that really changed my whole business after I left because my manager told me I would never be successful with the philosophy that I operated under. And I read the book, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. And I realized that really the way I ran my business, I had no idea it was a business philosophy, a very successful business philosophy. And, and that was one of the reasons that Bobby um, Bryant with DOS was finally able to convince me to come over was because his company, his whole premise is based on the go-giver laws of success. And one of those is the law of authenticity and it's losing the sales pitch, right? And that's one of the things that people can't stand about real estate agents. It's salesy, right? You're giving a sales pitch. You want them. the only way you're going to yep. get paid is to get commission, right? By being authentic, by doing lies, by sharing what you know, I, I'm, I'm, it's empathy, right? I'm, I'm, my empathy for somebody moving to a new city is off the charts because I know all of the challenges. It's not just finding a house. It is finding the right real estate agent. It is making sure you get the right deal. It's making sure you get connected to the community, that you find the right community. And, um, and that's, I think, what live really does a great job of is letting people get to know who you are and what you know and, and what problems you solve. Yes, exactly. And that's, I mean, live does a better job of that than anything else, than any other medium. And I'm, I'm really starting to hear a lot about what you're talking about, the authenticity and the not selling and giving value. And one of the first lives I did, I, I believe the person said, he said, you don't really have to sell on LinkedIn. You just have to be out there and people have to know what you do. So if they have that need, they're going to reach out to you or if they know someone who needs that they make the connection and he said he said people have to know who you are and what you do so that they can recommend clients to you or work to you or people yeah. to you but we we got a good question yeah. from the audience Ilya, thanks for hanging around she asked this question i don't know five or ten minutes ago and I'm, I'm finally getting to it but i thought it was a good question but i wanted to tie up some other things first how have your there's actually two parts to this question. How have your industry or yourself evolved as a result of the pandemic? And I can guess the real estate world has largely shifted due to the pandemic, but I'm going to throw this over to you and let you talk about this one a little bit. Ilya, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's, it's going to finally, I think, take the industry where it needs to go that it's been so reluctant to go. Um, it's busier than ever right now, which I find really interesting um, because homes are, are selling fast and people have this fear of missing out and they're buying and real estate agents are trying to get people to buy more because they, they didn't have much business, obviously, February through April, May. Um, and now, you know, sales are up, prices are up, uh, multiple offers are back. Um, but the interesting thing, and that's due to low interest rates, people working from home, a lot of different reasons. Um, it'll be interesting to see if that can last. But, but the genie's out of the bottle, right? I sold a home back in March and I, everything. I, I'm in Boston, right? This is a former client of mine moving in Dallas. We did everything virtually, right? I never went to the house. Um, he didn't go to the inspection. There was a video, you know, very different, right? Um, nobody, you know, one of the, one of the, things that real estate agents love to do is pick people up in their big, bright, shiny cars and tour them around. Well, that wasn't happening either, right? So you, even if you go with a real estate agent to the home, you're in separate cars and you're driving yourself. Um, and then a lot of the tours are virtual. So really, by the time somebody was really looking at houses, they'd already virtually toured a bunch of homes. And so instead of me having to take a, a client out to see 50 homes, they might only have 10 homes to see. 
And, and that really will, I think, skyrocket the questioning of, okay, so what is the value of a real estate professional and why are these commissions this high? Especially if I list my home and the real estate agent really isn't doing anything on the listing side, um, but getting it in MLS and putting a sign up and the buyers are finding it online. Um, I, I think that's going to really change the way that, um, that the business is done. And um, but I think there is a really interesting um, and, and what I think DOS is going to do so differently is really combine that high tech approach that we need in the real estate industry with the high touch, because I, I, we're not ready. And I don't think we ever will be able to fully get rid of the human element of buying and selling a home. That's just still a very important part of it. But there are segments and there are homes. Um, I just helped a, a lady sell her home that was one hundred and twenty five thousand dollar home and there were no agents involved. I, I connected her with a um, with a with a like a wholesaler, and it was the right thing for her. Right. Um, and so again, I think it goes back to the, the the consumer choice. And I think Ily, I guess that the short answer to that question would be: I think it's going to open up much more consumer choice, much more efficient systems, and um, and and shift over to tech more and more. All right, I'm bring myself back here. Uh, there, there's a lot there. I, I can say my wife loves to look at homes on the internet and you were kind of talking about this. One of, one of the things is all, any person can go out and look on the MLS. If you don't know what the MLS is, the multiple listing service that shows all the houses for sale in your market or the, your area, wherever you're looking and you can see those houses. Uh, here's one of the things that I see isn't usually done well. Pictures are usually low quality, not necessarily. Like, it boggles my mind that as real estate professionals, you do not hire in an actual real photographer to come in here. And I know a yeah. few realtors that do, and I think that's a big thing. I think one of the other things, especially now, is more of a virtual tour. How can you walk mm -hmm. somebody through the house? via video yeah. or some of those virtual tour apps where you can walk around and you can turn 360 in the room and see what does this kitchen really look like instead of what does this just look like from this one angle. And I, right. I think I think the real estate industry is going to get better about that and how they how they present it. Because like you yeah, were saying, well, you don't yeah. Ved Mishra, who is on here, I don't know if he's still on here. He is the founder of Flip Spaces that's based in Boston and it's international. Um, they've really created some interesting things for virtual tours and virtual design, virtual furniture placement um, that I think has some really interesting implications for the industry and really needs to be more part of the process. Um, and then I, yeah, and I, and yeah, professional photos. It's like a, I even tell, and I teach a for sale by owner course. Um, professional photos are a no brainer. You, I don't care if you're for sale by owner or if you're listed with a real estate broker, you, you, you've got to have professional photos. Um, and again, I love Ask Doth's approach because again, um, it doesn't have to be listed at 3% anymore. And DOS actually gives the seller the options on, on what level of service they want because every consumer, every seller needs a different level of service. And, um, but professional right. photos are never, a, those are, those are non-negotiable. You have to have them. I, I would agree. I, I'm not, I'm not really a photographer, but I know enough about it to know the knowing about the differences in lighting and camera angles just makes so much of a difference in your shots. And I, oh, yeah. I've seen pictures of, yeah. yeah. Well, I was just right. say we're social media home, home, um, you know, home show junkies on, on HGTV and stuff. I mean, that's your competition when you're selling your home. So you have to have it in that light or I'm just going to scroll right by it. Exactly. You, you have to be good here. Uh, Wendy threw out this comment. Uh, this goes, we were talking about this a little bit ago, uh, authenticity of live shows and selling. And I hear this a lot on LinkedIn when someone first connects with you and they instantly go into their sales pitch, it, it just puts people off. We don't like it. I, I don't like it. I need, I need to try just responding to these people and asking them how often does it work? I get a lot of these for Bitcoin. So... <laughs> 
Yeah, no, no kidding. And I agree with Wendy on that. We don't want a sales pitch. I have a funny commercial that I've not released yet um, of what happens when somebody in a coffee shop makes the, uh, the says out loud that they need to sell their home and everybody in the coffee shop is a real estate agent. And what happens, the chaos that ensues after that. We don't want a sales pitch, right? I um, mean, that again goes no. back to that. That's to me the beautiful thing about DOS and DOS social agents, um, you know, not to necessarily pitch my business again, but I think it's brilliant is giving consumers that option that 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 no pressure sales um, no pre pressure professional consulting really more than a sales pitch um, you need that neutral advisor that trusted advisor um, Carl Slade out of New Zealand who's a real estate agent there and has a company called real estate restated uh, restate real estate I, I hope I'm saying that right it's something in that order um, but he's really done it differently and they get paid. They never work with a client without getting paid up front, which is one of the challenges in the North American real estate model. Um, and, uh, and he says, you know, there's such a difference between being a, a, a salesperson and a real estate professional, a business professional. And, uh, and so I really do hope that real estate will um, evolve to be more of that, more of a, a professional service model rather than a sales commission only based model. That's true. Dive back into a couple of comments. Wendy, uh, Gold Palin agrees with you. I would agree Gold Palin probably gets this. I, I see what he posts on LinkedIn a lot, and I would, I would agree with that. Uh, Ranga also said uh, there's a human element behind the business, and it looks like a live show is a great way to put the human in you in front of others. So I would totally agree with that. Ranga, now I got to look... Oh, here's here's my last question about live shows, and then I have a couple of questions about real estate and realtors. So let's let's dive into this question since we're still on live a little bit here. What is the best and worst part of hosting a live show? Oh, best part of the people I get to talk to because I only do interviews. I, I rarely, only a few times, have ever gone on and done, done a monologue. I hate monologues. Um, I, I love to interview people and to share what they know. Because it's it's not really a lot of times I say I'm not always the expert. I'm just the expert in knowing who you need to know that is the expert. Um, so that's the best part. The worst part is it is a lot of work. Um, it's a lot. If you're going to do it well, it's preparation. It's getting the right questions. It's um, it's and and I put I put a ton of time into mine. I do promos and I put together videos and I um and now I'm trying to repurpose them into a podcast and and um it is to do it really well and to really highlight the guest in the best um, light possible. It's just a lot of prep work, but um. So I don't know that that's a worse part, but it is time consuming. And, and like you said, I mean, you know, I, there, I, I've got my other, my job that I need to be doing. Um, and the live show is not, I'm not monetizing it. It's not something that I have sponsors for. Um, it's just something that I do to feed my business. Right. Yeah. So best part I, is one of the parts I really like, kind of agree with you interviews. You get to talk to other interesting people. It's fun. It's interesting. It, if you bring on the right people, they provide value to your audience. And you're right. It, it's hard. There are there are not very many people in the world that can give a 20, 30 minute presentation over video and make that engaging and interesting for the audience to listen to. And some people can do that. So there are some of those people out there. I don't think I'm one of those people. And it sounds like you don't really think you're one of those types of people that enjoys doing that either. So, all right, we're jumping back in. Our next audience question goes along uh, great with what we've been talking about here and great with our next question for Lindy. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? So if you're in the audience, if you're watching, let us know where you'd live. If you could live anywhere. If, yeah, interesting question. My, my follow-up question for Lindy on that is, and this is one that, my family has discussed before. I've been a remote worker for at least five years now. And I live in South Dakota. If you've ever been to South Dakota, don't come visit in January and February. It's really cold here. And every year in January and February, when it's cold and we're stuck in our house, we always ask ourselves, why why, why do we still live in South Dakota? But here, here's the problem that we've had, and I'm assuming other people have this. And especially when we're talking about 
a lot of these tech companies, these big ones in places like San Francisco and Seattle and New York City are starting to implement remote workforce due to the pandemic. And some of them are finding out they can actually do their jobs remotely as well as they were before. So people are starting to realize I don't have to live in San Francisco. I don't have to pay that really high rent for where I live. The question I have is if I, how do people know if they could, if, if I could live anywhere, how do I decide where to live? So I'm going to throw that over to you. Uh, well, that's easy. They call a DOS social agent and they are able to pick their brain and find out about, um, you know, different areas and they can talk to somebody that lives in, um, you know, one city versus another and find out, you know, cost of living, lifestyle, what they love about it. Right. I mean, especially like when we moved to Dallas, we could have lived in Houston. We could have lived in Austin. We could have lived in Dallas. And so I spoke to people in each of those three cities to kind of get an idea. But a DOS social agent will be the same thing. You can you can call them up and talk to them. No obligation. They're not giving you a sales pitch and you can really find out. And, and, and I could even connect you to somebody who, um, let's say you were homeschooled. Right. And so you need to have somebody specifically that understands the homeschooling in that community and get you connected to them. Um, but, you know, I would say, you know, that's a, you know, that's a way to do it is to to find people that live there. And really, what are the what are the top things that are important to you? And, and I'm, I'm going to turn this back at you. What are you doing in South Dakota still? If you've got kids that are homeschooled, you're not you could you could you could you could get in an RV. Well, of course, I guess it's hard to work from home in an RV. But I mean. You know, there's so many interesting places to live, and that's such an education in and of itself to um, let your kids explore different parts of the country. I mean, when we homeschooled, it was the field trips. That was, you know, that was, you know, 50% of our education were uh, the field trips, and so to be able to be in different cities. Um, but yeah, I would say, um, yeah, plugging in with um, with uh, with Ask DOS, with uh, social agents, and connecting with me to find out who to talk to in these different cities. Um, there's another brilliant platform that relocation management companies are using called um, uh, Pivot, founded by Lynn Greenberg, and that is also a way that um, that people can discover different um, cities, and as well as another one called Next Verb that was founded by um, a friend of mine that's here in Boston that also is a, a way to find out about different cities and suburbs, quality of life, commute times, distance to the airport, you know, but it really depends on what factors are important to you. I mean, you love to ski, start looking at places to move where you can ski. I have a son in San Francisco and we're like, get out of San Francisco, you're remote till next July, go live near the ski slopes somewhere. So it's easier for you to get there on the weekends and you'll have more yeah, money. I think some of those remote employees are going to relocate themselves. And I think some of those Absolutely. big tech companies are going to have troubles telling people to move back to San Francisco. It's or going to be tough. Georgia. I think it's I, going to be tough. And, and maybe, maybe, they've had, maybe if they've had nine months living somewhere else, they'll be ready to get back to the city because people live in a city. I'm in the middle of a city. I love it. I love the vibrancy and, 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 and everything about it. Um, I, it would be hard for me to think about living in the suburbs again. Um, but the ability to pick the city I live in is, is, is attractive. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, I've never it's lived in a big city. city. Yeah. Well, you probably yeah, got good I, cost of living in, in South Dakota. Oh, uh, we, I don't know. I, it's cheaper than the big cities, but, I, I think this is this is what I would say about ours. I, we're nowhere near what San Francisco is, but I think we're probably on par with bigger cities like a Kansas City or a Minneapolis or a Charlotte, yeah, something like that. So, sure. so we don't have really cheap cost of living, but mm -hmm. but it's, yeah. it's clearly affordable. A ah, couple of comments coming in, Steve Ferreira. I had him on the show Thank last you. week, so. If you want to know about him, he runs a company called Ocean Audit, and he does a show, OK Boomer, every week. He just does a really good job with a professional show, and he does a solo show. So he he does occasionally do an interview, but he he just does a lot of research every week and talks about how ocean freight, you know, shipping crates are affecting the global economy. So that was neat. He also said he homeschools as well. Gopalan is making a shout out to Ranga. Uh, now I'm going to jump into Ranga's question. It's a long one, so I might not leave it up here because it's mm -hmm. cutting off the bottom of your <laughs> face. 
Uh, if you were to start this business now, when a pandemic is upon the world, would you start out differently? Would a live show make an even bigger difference during this time and help you start the business from scratch? So if you were going to start what you were doing all over again, how would you do it different given we're in a pandemic? Well, I did that, right? I mean, I moved to Boston in January, restarting. I, I had a relocation consulting company and so was restarting that all over again when everything kind of shut down. Um, so made it very, very challenging because I know nobody in Boston, right? I hadn't had a chance to get networked or, um, in, you know, in the community or, or anything to build that business. Um, so live has been instrumental. Right. I mean, it's been my way to get connected and to continue to share my message and get connected to people in the relocation industry and in co companies and corporations. Um, so and I think live right now, everybody's consuming a lot of, of information. And so live and video is is definitely a huge part of being able to build a business. So there you go, Ranga. Live is instrumental okay. in sharing and getting your message out. All right. All right, I have, all right, here's the question that's tied in with a number of things that you've talked about in the show. And I'm glad I even wrote this question up last night, so I got a banner for it. Uh, what can a human realtor bring to the world of relocation that tech never will be able to do? So I know you've talked about that. That's a great Take it away. So it's, you know, I always say we're moving to the, the side of tech, right? We were talked about that earlier. So much can be done virtually. Closings can be done virtually. Um, home viewings can be done virtually. Um, but it, we need high tech, but you still need high touch. It's still an emotional industry. It's still a, um, there are things that AI just can't tell you to, to learn from the perspective of a real estate agent about the, um, the nuances of living in a town or the price. Um, you, there's no oversight on pricing a home. A real estate agent, a brokerage can list that home in anything they want to. I've seen people price homes 20% above what the market value should have been. Um, they don't sell unless they end up having a buyer at that brokerage that buys it, which is an interesting thing. Um, there's really a lot of questions you need to ask about if you are in the real estate industry or if you're a, a consumer, you need to know those questions to ask. Um, but but there is a lot of value to having that human element. Again, when I move to a new city, I, my, I, I need a real estate agent that's kind of there for the first few months. I always say I'm your first friend when you move to a new city because I'm the only person you know to call. Right. And um, and so that's that human element that AI can't um, can't um, replace. Now, I do think a company like Pivot, the app that's Pivot, that's a social app, could replace real estate agents to some degree. I think social agents could replace um, real estate agents to some degree as the transaction becomes more and more um, tech oriented, more and more automated. But the social agent can be that human element, that human touch that we need to find out things that, that AI just can't deliver. I, that comment you made about, I'm your first friend in a new city and all the tech we can create in the world cannot, it, it cannot create the friendship. Yeah, we can create tech that gives us good recommendations yeah. on restaurants and things, but you're, I don't think you're ever gonna find technology or at least we're a ways off from this where if i want to know a restaurant you can call your realtor if you have a good one because they're your friend and say hey my children and my family really likes italian food where should we go i obviously right. i could ask google this and it would give me the ones that are closest to me but there's never going to be a tech that says oh you can go to this place i eat there with my family all the time we know the owner they do these special things for us. They're really just going to make you feel great. Tell them I sent you and, you know, they'll be excited mm -hmm. to see you. And, and that's a big difference. I use the analogy of, um, and I would do that for my, because it was when I had a, a client move in, they might need business connections, right? They might've moved for a spouse's job and the, the relocated partner needs connections to make his or her next career, right? So business connections. Um, and I always say, you know, you get a different service if somebody says, hey, um, you know, like you use the restaurant analogy, I always use like I need a pediatrician. Are you going to get better bedside ser um, service from a pediatrician whose son plays on the same soccer team as your son? 
um, whose wife you're friends with or whose husband you're friends with um, than just a pediatrician that you find in a Google search. You're going to get much better bedside manner and attention from that physician that you found because you have a personal connection of some sort. You may not have known them, but you have some kind of personal connection. And, and that's what the real estate professional offers. And, and it, before, during, and after the transaction, because we need that kind of connection to the community, to resources, to understand why would I choose to live in South Lake versus Frisco in Dallas, which are two very different neighborhoods, uh, very similar yep. in a lot of ways in economic and, and school choices, but they're 45 minutes apart neither one's right or wrong or better or worse. It's just, where do you find yourself? You know, where do you belong? Yeah. And data, you would look at that on the internet for two different neighborhoods. You'd say, well, they have good schools and similar housing prices. So they're yeah. similar neighborhoods, but only a, only a human really is going to know the difference of I've been here and here's things people do differently. Maybe in this neighborhood, people spend a lot more time out, you know, in front of their houses and hanging out with their neighbors and in a different community, they don't. And tech's really not going to tell right. you that. Mm -mm. No. Uh, all right. Question here from Gopalan. We're going to dive into this. Do you also help with an architect and a builder to restructure an existing house? I think he's maybe talking about a little bit of what you see on some HGTV where they fix up and so redo the I great resources for that. Um, and, and again, I'm a connector and that's what I love doing. Actually, a friend of mine wanted to list her house in Dallas and she needed to do some work like that. And I ended up connecting her to a real estate agent that really is really good at doing that and has um, one of the things that she really is good at doing is helping a seller determine what they need to do to invest in their home to get it to sell for the best price possible. Um, or I always had really great, and, and I encourage any real estate agent with social agents, we're going to be doing this to have those resources. Um, because when somebody buys a house, that's a fixer upper, they are going to need, um, they're going to need a, 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 somebody to help remodel or to design whatever they need to do. We need to be that trusted resource. Again, especially if somebody's moving to town because you're going to get a little better service. Again, if you have that personal connection to them and I say, you know what, Bob Smith or Joanne Brown are great at this and you're going to get just a little extra service. If I've recommended somebody that I know is good, but now they know I'm kind of watching and that I've recommended that and they're just going to put a little extra effort in than if you just found them on a Google search. Uh, it, that's, that's exactly true. I, I have a dentist. I don't even know why I'm talking about dentists, but I have a dentist who I've referred a number of people to. And I think it just, when, when you're, a, when you're the dentist and you know, someone has referred you, yeah, it builds an, it uh, builds a real connection with the new patient because it's, you and the dentist. Ups game. It, it subconsciously ups your game, right? I just sold my parents' house. I helped my parents sell their house and I interviewed the agents for them, which was a fascinating experience because we had, um, we had prices that, that we had received that were about $75,000 apart on a $550,000 house. So I was able to wow. kind of go in and ask the questions, well, what is the right price? Cause it's very important to list it at the right price. Um, and I interviewed people that this particular agent we chose with, um, I interviewed clients that had worked with her and, and found out kind of some of the things to be careful to watch for. But my mother said afterwards, she goes, boy, it was really interesting because she really stayed in touch with me and, um, and was in calling me. And, and, and that was the one thing that one of her clients had told me was that she's not real warm and fuzzy. She doesn't check in on you. She's kind of absent. She wasn't absent during this. She knew I was watching though. And so she made it a point, I think, to really stay in touch with my mom and stay on top of things. And then I was there to kind of push back on some things when this agent didn't really um, fight for her interest ahead of getting the deal done. I was kind of there to um, ask hard questions and to push to get what my mom wanted because my mother was like, ah, well, I'll just defer to her because she, you know, she knows best. I was there to ask those hard questions. I take my husband to the doctor with me every time I go to the doctor because he's in medical, he's, he's in the field. And so he knows the questions asked. One of the last times and I wrote, did a video about this, one of the last times I took him to the doctor with me, the doctor uh, suggested a medicine. And my husband asked him some questions and poked some holes in it. And the doctor said, well, yeah, you're right. The medicine you're suggesting is a better one, but this is just an easier one. And well, my husband's like, well, she doesn't need the easier one. She needs the better one. I would have known to ask that question. 
right? And so that is what, wow. um, you know, again, having that connection. And again, I go back to my business because that's how I relate it. Having that, the social agent versus a Google search is just a very different value proposition. Yeah, humans can do things that tech never will. Uh, Ranga made a shout out for answering his question. So thanks for that. We, we're getting close to the end of the show. So audience question, if you have a question for Lindy, we would love to hear it and we'd love to talk about it. Uh, my question for you, and usually I ask this earlier in the show, but we've been having a good conversation going on here. So what question do you wish I would have asked you? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I think you asked me lots of great questions. So I, I, I can't think of one. Um, um, how do you make friends in the pandemic <laughs> when you're new to a city? I guess that would be one um, because that's one of the things that I'm talking about. And we're creating a, um, a, with a friend of mine, Doreen Cumberford, who has written a book called life in the camel lane. She's lived all over the world. Um, she, uh, they, anyway, um, we're doing a seminar October 1st with people that have relocated in 2020 right, for their jobs or like myself, a lot of us moved prior to the pandemic. And I'm, I'm an empty nester, but I can't imagine having moved to any of the number of cities that I've lived in a month or two before everything shut down with children. And then all of a sudden having the children at home, having my husband at home, everybody working from home, and I have no support network. That would be hard. And a lot of people have done that this year. And, um, and so, so that's a that's a, uh, we're really working on um, on helping create a community for people that have relocated in 2020 because it has not been an easy thing and I've known people that have recently really, I had a friend that relocated to Dubai from the U.S. a few weeks ago I have another friend that relocated from Germany to Prague recently there everything was put on hold but they did just move but they're still dealing with this post pandemic world where people are still not you know they're they're more than an arm's length they're more than six feet apart. And that's, that's challenging, especially when you're a mom, especially when you're social and you come to a city and you don't have friends, you don't know the teachers, you don't know the parents of the kids. Um, and so we're working on creating a community to, to help people navigate that this year. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. And I've, I've thought about it. There's actually one family that moved to Sioux Falls recently. And so my daughter did a Bible study this summer, e even though it was the pandemic, we we set up a fire pit in our front yard and they, the girls came oh, and sat, that. I don't know, six feet apart uh, our, in, in our yeah, front driveway and did this. But one of the girls that's got great. signed up. Uh, it was our, our homeschool connection. And maybe if I ever do a homeschool show, I'll, I'll, I'll get you back on to talk about homeschooling. But through a Facebook group, uh, they moved to town and through the Facebook group, there was a message out there that my daughter was doing this Bible study and uh, one of the girls showed up and she'd only been in town. I think it was in April. So it is a month after everything is shut down and her and my daughter are now good friends. And so that was just an example it. of kind of a chance thing where it lucked out for them to move to town and meet somebody and meet a friend. But yeah, that, that probably hey, doesn't what, work for everybody. I put a challenge out there to your audience, find somebody that's moved recently to your town and reach out to them. Um, I, I think that's a, we, we did a survey with Pivot recently and, and, and we asked the people that had moved um, just prior to the pandemic, how many people had reached out to them um, that had been involved with their relocation, whether it was their real estate agent, whether it was somebody involved in the relocation management company. And um, there were only a couple of people that responded that anybody had reached out to them. So um, I, I think it's up to us to be good neighbors and to think about what that would be like and put put yourself in their shoes. So if you know somebody that's moved, reach out to them, say hello, invite them to hang out in your front yard. <laughs> and that's a, that's a great idea. It's something I've never really thought about connecting. Well, you wouldn't it, it, if you it, haven't it's tough to know who's new to your city, but connecting with a realtor that deals with people coming into your new city and how can you meet those people and try to pull them in and make them feel more a part of your city? Because some cities are really good at this. And some cities are very much, you're a part of our city only if you grew up and you lived here. And outsiders yeah. aren't always as welcome. Uh, we're yeah, kind of wrapping it up, but Ryan or Gopal and said, I'm doing a good job with the live show and the guests. So thank you for that, Gopal and thank you, Lindy. Uh, 
Uh, here's what I'm going to throw out I'll to you. My... I was just no, going to say, say how, do my... we, how do we get in touch with you? So I'll, I'll put it down in the, in the comments. So um, if they want to see my live show, they can follow hashtag Reload Talk, R-E-L-O-T-A-L-K on LinkedIn. And um, I have one today at 12 o'clock with a um, lady that I know out of New York City, Amel, who is a, um, a tandem nomad. She she teaches people how to create um uh, yep, Relo Talk. There it is. Um, uh, she teaches people how to create mobile careers that they can take with them wherever they go. Um, but yeah, we do that on Wednesdays and Fridays. And um, yeah, find me there. Go to DOS Social Agents, socialagents.com or askdos.com. And again, I can put that in the comments. Um, if you're ever looking to buy or sell a home anywhere in the US, contact me first. I will save you from um, making mistakes. I will help you make sure you ask the right questions. I will connect you to the right real estate professional and I will hold them accountable to make sure that they are providing the value that you need and expect and deserve. So that's what I do. Well, that is fantastic and thank you so much for being on the show lindy so i've known lindy for a couple of months everybody who doesn't know i think the first time we met was via the linkedin live influencers group yeah we met yeah on there that's anyhow i think that's been a great group i've met a number of interesting people from there and i, I look forward to our yeah, bi weekly meetings I, it's, it's a, good a lot of fun it's a lot of fun so, well, Ryan, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, when you relocate, I'll have you on my show and we'll talk about how it went. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everybody for watching. I consider it a huge honor that people are willing to spend a part of their day Absolutely. listening to me talk to interesting people. So I never take that for granted. And thank you, Lindy, so much for being on the show. You can hang on. We'll, we'll debrief a little bit in the in the room afterward but thank you everybody have a great day and a great weekend and there won't actually be a show next week i'm taking next week off but i'll be back the following week with oh i just forgot his name abs that's <laughs> it he goes uh oh i forgot it I, i'm excited to have him on and now i feel really bad that i forgot his name but it happens in live video you forget things but have a great weekend everybody and talk to you in two weeks